Okay, it's a few minutes after eight o'clock. I think we've uh, given a little time for people to join. Again, we are here to introduce our 10 gigabits at 10 kilometers webinar on our Extend MM solution. My name is David Sumi. I am responsible for marketing at Cyclu. Presenting today will be Shimon Hochbaum, who will take you through the deck. As mentioned previously, we will try and uh, gather the questions that you may have and we'll answer those at the end of the webinar. With that, we're going to move forward and move to the next slide. So really, you know, everybody loves eBand. Uh, eBand has the capacity and the spectrum uh, to deliver that capacity and, and, it, and it does a great job at that. You, but the key with eBand is that you really want that high availability with that high capacity. You really want to be able to take that as far as you possibly can, more than the standard one or two miles that most links can perform. When you take that 10 gigabits and extend it, as we're going to show you, uh, to the 10 kilometers, not only are you getting the range, but with the Ziklu solution, you're getting a dollars per gigabit ratio that is unmatched in the industry. Uh, our power extend mm running on our ether hall 8010 is unmatched in terms of the dollars that you pay and the gigabits that you get with Spiklu, we like to talk about our broad product portfolio uh, you can get everything you need in a millimeter wave solution from 60 70 or 80 gigahertz we have a variety of products and capacities such that whatever your network design needs uh, in terms of capacity or distance Spiklu is able to buy that solution for you with the all one-stop shop comes the flexibility. You can buy from us an Extend MM kit from our distribution channels, or you can buy the pieces, and Shimon will go through what some of those pieces are. With that, I'm going to turn this over to Shimon. Please take us forward. Dave, thank you for the introduction, and welcome again, everybody. So for us, uh, actually, all this uh, started, you know, when we were uh, beginning to receive some uh, interesting quotes uh, from partners. Uh, this one from Australia, claiming uh, a link uh, all the way to 22 kilometers, which it, which sounds uh, pretty uh, interesting. And we were thinking, you know, that was uh, the best already uh, available. And then we actually found out uh, that we have uh, links operating all the way to 28 kilometers in millimeter wave band. Uh, so you know, when we see all these uh, successes, we started to ask ourselves, uh, can we make this more repeatable? Uh, can we actually you know, allow more than just uh, the people applying themselves to the extreme uh, to do some of the same? And uh, this is how uh, we have come up with this uh, complete solution for high capacity links, uh, anywhere up to 10 gigabit and at long distances. And we are going to look at 10 kilometers as a baseline. Uh, so why do we think about uh, millimeter wave? Because as uh, Dave said, it's uh, economical, it's you know, the licensing for millimeter wave links uh, around the world is generally largely licensed. It's uh, very easy to deploy compared to fiber. Uh, and the real challenge with these millimeter wave links uh, anywhere you know, at three, four, five, ten kilometers is uh, all about engineering. Uh, if a link is properly engineered, it will do what it is what is predicted. The main factor to take into account is the rain. Uh, as uh, the, the main challenge with uh, keeping uh, link availability uh, wherever one wants it, uh, five nines, four nines, 99.999% uh, or similar. Uh, fortunately, there is a, a lot of uh, rain information available and rain statistics available for the last 40 or 50 years all around uh, the globe. And it's uh, easy, it's possible to engineer a link uh, for uh, any kind of availability. So after the last, after the first three kilometers, uh, basically what we recommend is, or beyond three kilometers, is to engineer the links for 99% of availability of the full capacity. Uh, so two gigabit with the 2500 or 10 gigabit with the 8010. And then, uh, basically fall back on a lower bound radio to resolve the 
0.999% availability, if that is what organization wants. Um, and that is where the whole extend MM solution comes as a, as a complete solution to deliver any kind of capacity from two to 10 gigabit all the way to 10 kilometers. If uh, we look at uh, rain again as uh, the, mm, uh, the biggest factor to take into account, and we focus on the uh, moments of uh, downpours or heavy rain densities, we see that even when uh, the rain seems to us uh, to be uh, quite heavy, uh, and we we'll measure it on a minute by minute, we see that there is actually a lot of highs, highs and ups uh, and downs. Sorry. Uh, and when we focus even as at uh, the very highest densities, we see that these events, generally speaking, last for a few minutes at a time. They will accumulate to maybe many minutes along a year, maybe you know, 24 hours uh, consecutive or maybe more, but at any one point in time, these events are going to last for no more than a few minutes. And now if we look at it from a user experience or from a service uh, capability, uh, this means that we are going to have 99% of the full capacity, uh, we're going to have sorry, the full capacity for 99% of the time, and uh, the 1% uh, will be a lot of small interruptions where uh, it is important to maintain availability of the critical services, but things like file transfers or a similar type of services can probably wait a few minutes uh, before they are resumed. And that's why the logic of falling back to a lower band, a lower capacity, lower band uh, link uh, make a lot of sense. So uh, how does uh, this look like uh, in terms of a complete solution? Basically, we have uh, the millimeter wave uh, link uh, which is going to carry the bulk of uh, the traffic 99% of the time. And we fall back to a lower band uh, radio. It can be uh, 11 gigahertz, 5 gigahertz, uh, you know, anything that the organization is comfortable, but you know, 18 gigahertz as the highest frequency, because uh, if you offer the 24 gigahertz, uh, the effect of the rain, on 70, 80, or on 24 gigahertz are very similar, and there would not be a significant benefit from backing up a millimeter wave link with a microwave 24 gigahertz. So, you know, do not go uh, higher than 18. And actually, when uh, if we, so what we recommend is to even stay, you know, in the five gigahertz range, uh, because there we can uh, provide a complete solution. Uh, starting with uh, a single antenna, dual band antenna, 70, 80, and 5 gigahertz, all in, in, included in the same antenna, uh, which means that uh, it's a very simple deployment. Uh, a single antenna needs to be installed, a single link needs to be aligned, and not uh, no last but not least, it's a single attachment fee when uh, one leases the uh, space on the tower, you know, having two attachment fees or one attachment fees month by month uh, will quickly add up to significant saving with a single antenna. Uh, Etherall, uh, we have uh, you know, solutions between 2 and 10 gigabit which are available. Uh, licensing in the millimeter wave 7080 is very easy, fast and easy coordination. Uh, most everywhere, uh, similar, you know, 5 gigahertz is generally speaking unlicensed, so we try to make it easy for this uh, long distance solution to be deployed, and if somebody uh, you know, can deal with the licensing at different you know, spectrum like 11 or 18, that's fine, but we try to make this easy and you know, our recommendations stay with the 5 gigahertz. In order to make this uh, also easy, you can understand here from the diagram that uh, all the networking, uh, all the software to control these uh, two links in one uh, is integrated within the Etherall 
a radio so that there is no additional networking, no additional software to deploy. It's all in one place. And to make this uh, even easier, we will show you that we have plans to uh, make this uh, obviously a single data cable up to the tower and eventually a single power cable also up to the tower uh, so that if you might have already an existing link uh, be it 5 gigahertz or anything else uh, running up to a tower and you want to go from maybe a gigabit capacity to a 2 or to a 10 gigabit capacity you can reuse the existing uh, wiring data and power to upgrade the capacity So what are all the components of our extended MEM solution? Uh, we have Etherroll radios, we have dual band antenna, we have software and hardware, we have our smart all apps, which uh, we are going to talk about a little bit later, but basically make it simple to plan and design networks at 10 kilometers, at 10 gigabit. And then we have some recommendations for the secondary, secondary link and the lower frequency radio. So a little bit about uh, the Etherroll radios. Uh, you know, we are our recommendations are from the many uh, radios that Cyclu can deliver. Let's focus on the EH8010, the 10 gigabit capable radio for 10 kilometers at 99% availability in rain zone K. 99% um, availability of the 10 gigabit uh, capacity. Uh, we have another radio which is interesting to look at if one wants to go maybe a little further uh, all the way to 15 kilometers but now we need to reduce a little bit the capacity to gigabit. Uh, the two radios work equally well with uh, a dual band antenna uh, that you see here which is uh, both 70, 80 and 5 gigahertz. Uh, traffic ports available if uh, one deploys the 8010, it's a, a 10 gigabit port which can work also at lower uh, capacities uh, but it's what is interesting is that this uh, single port can do works on fiber or on copper uh, so again if you know, we are in the migration scenario from uh, something which is below one gigabit and you, know, you don't want to wait for the a cabling infrastructure to be upgraded to fiber, the 8010FX can take a CAT5E cabling, an existing CAT5E or CAT6 cabling directly into its 10 gigabit port. It will synchronize with the switch under the tower at any speed that it can deliver 1, 2.5, 5 and 10 gigabit eventually. Uh, if uh, the organization will decide to deploy the 2500FX, then the traffic can come in over two fiber optic uh, ports and one copper port, uh, any combination of these three. In, regardless of the radio that you will choose, the backup port to the lower band radio is always going to be a one gigabit Ethernet copper, so that's pretty standard. Many uh, radios available with this option. And for those who do not uh, know the details of our radios, 8010FX uh, will take 48 volt DC up to 50 watt in that case. 2500 can work with uh, a 48 volt DC or PoE depending on uh, the installation. So we have uh, a two feet antenna which is uh, basically a dual band antenna 70, 80 and 5 gigahertz. You can see an antenna installed uh, on the chart here uh, on the right. So as I said it's a single installation. Uh, you know, the mounting kit uh, extends here from uh, the right of the picture to the tower. It can be installed uh, with, you know, to, so in that case we are to the left of the tower and can be installed uh, to the right of the tower. The very flexible antenna. Uh, for those who know already our existing two-feet antenna, it is uh, very similar, just uh, we have the 5 gigahertz reflector integrated inside, uh, behind the radome of the existing antenna, and we have the two coaxial cables uh, coming out from the side of the reflector, uh, as I said, two 
connect the 5 gigahertz radio the cables are terminated with SMA connectors uh, some rate some 5 gigahertz radios have SMA connectors others have n type and in that case you know an adapter will be necessary uh, this antenna is GA and uh, can be ordered from our distributors partners uh, right away um, together with this new dual band antenna in the box we also include this mounting pole here which uh, will mount to the back of the ether roll radio be it 8010 or 2500 and then the 5 gigahertz radio can be attached to this pole just like it would attach to any other pole you know if uh, tie wraps or uh, steel bands whatever is your recommended whatever whatever is your preference uh, for attachment uh, but what is nice is by including this accessory if you want in the with the dual band antenna will allow anybody who will deploy that solution to as i say claim a single attachment to the pole on the right here because there is just one antenna and one antenna mounted to the pole to the tower sorry so what about uh, the extend mm control uh, software and hardware as i said there is no additional networking gear net no additional cabling uh, we have here an ether roll radio uh, sorry an ether roll link which is deployed end to end uh, doesn't matter what is the backup link for the, for the sake of the discussion the traffic is going via the uh, millimeter wave link uh, most of the time any lower band radio can be connected to the one gigabit backup port of the ether roll radio and the backup path between the two radios is monitored by the ether roll radios all the time so that if there would be a failure of that link because of a hardware failure or anything else an alarm is raised uh, instantaneously and you know we don't discover when we actually need the uh, link to be protected uh, we don't discover when it's too late that there was a problem with the backup link um, so the user can set up a, a capacity threshold which will trigger uh, the switch over an alarm will be raised when the switch over is raised and you know, that will most of the time occur when the rain goes from light to moderate or heavy at these distances um, the alarm will be triggered and the traffic will be switched to the backup link the switch over uh, can be affected also manually for maintenance for testing uh, as an example you want to uh, I don't know the, the, whatever the reason would be that you want to do some uh, uh, testing on uh, on the backup link and verify what its uh, real capacity uh, you can do a manual switch over don't need to wait for the rain uh, as a clarification this extend mm control software is a license feature on our radios it will be available on the 8010 uh, later this uh, year it is already available on uh, the 2500 with software 7.x um, if you are not familiar with this aspect of our licensing licenses uh, any licensable feature can be trialed for up to 30 days not necessarily consecutive days but a total of 30 days uh, you, know, you can try the control software you see that it works for you and does well you know works well for your organization uh, then you, know, you can uh, go ahead and purchase the license uh, from your distributor if you feel it does not exactly do what you want uh, then you know you can manage the switch over from your own uh, switch or router depending on how the organization works but again you know it's it's flexible you can try it you like it keep it uh, it doesn't exactly work as you would like uh, you know you can you don't need to continue using it and you don't need to pay for something that you don't that doesn't work according to your expectations 
how does the uh, GUI look like? Because I said, you know, we, we make this work as a seamless uh, integrated solution, so you don't need to you know, look on the right, look on the left, uh, you know, monitor the toolings at the same time. So we have a, a screen on our Etherall GUI, uh, which allows managing the Etherall uh, functionality. Uh, again, assuming that the license is uh, you know, available or in trial mode, you go to the extend MM uh, GUI. You have you have to enable obviously the uh, software. Uh, you can decide which of the two radios, or which of the two Ethereum radio uh, controls the functionality. One of the two is going to uh, you know monitor the backup link. Is going to realize that the capacity is under the threshold and uh, will trigger the switch over so that there would be no confusion between the two radios on you know, when to switch or when to raise alarms. In the case of the 2500, you can decide which of the two Ethernet ports is the backup port. In the case of the 8010, it is obvious, but it will still be noted here you know, that the backup port is ETH1. You can decide you know, what is the capacity threshold. Is it one gigabit? Is it 500 meg? Is it 200 meg? Whatever. And you are comfortable uh, keeping on the millimeter wave link and when you know when to switch over to the backup and at any point in time you can see what is the status uh, you know is the main path active currently is the backup path available or are we running the traffic on uh, the backup path additional clarification about uh, the extend mm solution some organizations uh, use VLANs, uh, for example, for management, but also to differentiate between different customers, different uh, classes of service. And so if you use VLANs, obviously the VLANs are uh, defined on the radio port of the millimeter wave uh, radio. Uh, so for, uh, what is ETH0 on the switch? Any uh, VLAN that uh, you want to protect uh, via the backup link uh, has to be also defined on the backup port. Uh, otherwise, the switch uh, will not uh, basically allow the traffic to switch over to the backup port. Uh, you now, that's uh, uh, the advantage is that you know if you have uh, maybe more than a few VLANs and you know that some VLANs generally carry not essential traffic. Uh, then you can not define these uh, less critical VLANs on the backup port, which means that you can be sure that only the critical traffic or the priority traffic will go to, to the backup port. In addition, on the 8010 and only on the 8010, uh, we have a better QoS engine, and uh, regardless of uh, all of the traffic that is coming through the backup port and uh, we are uh, going to utilize the QS engine on the 8010 uh, so we try to switch as much of the traffic as possible on the backup port but uh, we are going to first of all switch the higher classes of service and we'll do random discards on the lower classes of service if we need to So we have looked at uh, what is available out there in terms of uh, you know, lo lower frequency radios or backup links uh, you know, in the five gigahertz family because we want to keep this uh, easy to deploy. Uh, we know that uh, you know, some of the audience here may have some preferences already for uh, some different types of vendors for five gigahertz radios. We recommend to look first of all at uh, radios that can go all the way to a gigabit of capacity. Uh, what we have identified so far is the B5 from uh, Mimosa and the Air Fiber 5X HD from Ubiquiti. Uh, again, we are aware that you know there are maybe some other links, maybe some newer models will come available as long as uh, the radio that you choose to deploy for the backup has a one gigabit port 
uh, you know, it will interface with our radio if you want our radio to manage all the uh, backup uh, mechanism if you want. Any 5 GHz link will work, any microwave link will work, but uh, in the case of a microwave link, we don't have a dual band antenna and you will have to deploy two antennas in that case. Uh, again, to round up all of this, uh, we, are, we, have, you know, we have two important uh, applications in our smart hall suites uh, which are relevant. One is the link budget calculator, LBC, uh, which has been uh, supporting only Etherall uh, or multi-hall links so far, so 60, 70, 80. And uh, we are adding a use case to understand uh, the capacity options all the way to you know, 10 kilometers and more. You're looking at a combination of the millimeter wave uh, link, 2500 or 8010 with a two feet antenna, and uh, the backup capacity. Uh, you know, what can one expect at 10 kilometers in terms of uh, uh, capacity? A uh, windy has already been uh, upgraded to support a millimeter. You know, designs at 10 kilometers. So it's very simple. You go into the project setting, uh, you know, choose an 2500 or 8010 for distances of 10 kilometers with the two feet antenna. Do your design as you have been doing design so far. You can see here you know, a design you know, in San Francisco for a link of almost five kilometers. 8010 is selected. And uh, during the BOM review, you would have to switch uh, the type of the antenna uh, from the regular two feet to the two feet dual band. And if you decide uh, to uh, take advantage of the extend MM, add the extend MM software to the relevant links. So an example of you know, some solutions that uh, we have to look at, uh, we are going to take this uh, you know, a step further in the case of uh, the 5 gigahertz or other links looking at the power as well, where you can see here you know, our Etherall radio, the traffic port coming into the radio, copper fiber. Uh, and then we also want to look at, uh, you know, the, we need to connect a gigabit between the Etherall radio in this case and the B5 as for the sake of this example. And we also need to do power. So assuming that uh, you would have a, 40, a single 48 volt DC uh, pair going up to uh, the tower, uh, we are going to make available a dual-ended outdoor injector, which uh, on the one hand will connect the two radios uh, with a one gigabit data cable if you want, but will also inject in the two directions a Power of uh, power over Ethernet, passive mode, 48 volt DC, 50 watt for the Ethereal radio, and 10 or 20 watt, depending on uh, the type of uh, uh, sorry, depending on the type of uh, five gigahertz uh, radio available. Uh, if that, again, if that will work for other types of radios, that's fine. Uh, we have been working with uh, our distributors. Uh, for them to start building kits, you know, which are going to make sense, utilizing the B5, uh, utilizing the air fibers and some of the radios as the local market preferences uh, will dictate. Unfortunately, this accessory is not available today. So in the meantime, what uh, we recommend is a uh, power the two uh, radios independently, you know, as uh, you would power them today. Uh, we have uh, different types of injectors available from CQLU to power our uh, own radios. If they work uh, to power a five gigahertz radio as well, that's great. And then uh, connect the data port of uh, the two uh, PO injectors back to back to each other uh, with a, you know, a single uh, Cat5 jumper to close the backup link between the two radios. 
here is an example of a complete uh, kit uh, that is going to be available again from distribution. So we have uh, the dual band antenna, two of them are necessary, uh, the high and the low uh, radios for the 10 gigabit capacity, the 10 gigabit license, the extend MM software, two of each, one for each side, uh, no, two 5 gigahertz radios, an adapter if it is necessary when the radio is terminated with an N-type and not with a, an SMA, and then uh, the power on each side of the links. So again, as a summary, I think uh, everybody understands now that uh, 10 gigabit at 10 kilometer is easily achievable. It will uh, deliver a combination of high capacity and high availability, taking advantage of uh, the millimeter wave capacity for uh, the 10 gigabit and the lower frequency band for the increased availability all the way to five nines. Uh, these uh, solutions uh, provide uh, a you know, an attra very attractive and beatable ratio of dollar per gigabit compared to a microwave, compared to fiber. And I hope that at Ciclu we have uh, looked at all the different aspects uh, to make this uh, an easy to deploy one stop shop solution. Uh, the radios, the control software, the dual band antennas power accessories and recommendations for lower band radios, the smart hall applications to help uh, plan and design all this. Uh, and again, our uh, distributors partners are going to make kits available so that it's a one click on their website, on their ordering system, and the complete kit uh, will uh, uh, be uh, you know, simply delivered to our customers. Uh, with that, we are going to turn now you know, to our Q&A session. Uh, we are going to look at uh, whatever was not answered already uh, from uh, the questions asked by the audience. All Take right, Shimon, thank, thank you very much for the presentation. We do have a couple of questions that have come through. Uh, the first one was um, was originally asking about 11 gigahertz or other radios, and I and I think you've answered that, but uh, maybe just to be clear for everybody on the call, can you use a licensed microwave with this solution? So again, the um, every organization is free to to use whatever they th they feel is right, whatever whatever they feel is easy for them to deploy. Uh, you know, we we try to look at uh, 11 or or 18 or other uh, similar bands. Unfortunately, uh, all of these uh, radios that there have a different uh, mechanical interface, a different RF interface. So it would mean a, you know, a lot of complexity, a lot of decisions, and also you know, the, the the two critical aspects of the cost of a microwave radio and the cost of the license. Uh, that not every organization is ready to to deploy. So our goal was really to to try and make you know one very simple solution to deploy for those who want you know the, to to get to the 10 gigabit and the 10 kilometer uh, very easily. And if there are some organizations that you know, have larger engineering staff. Uh, are used maybe today to uh, to work with uh, 11 gigahertz or some other band can access the spectrum in the regions they want to deploy. We are not going to stop. I mean, but we just you know. So we offer, as you said very early, you know, we offer the complete solution and we offer the a la carte as well. And everybody should decide what is going to work for for them. So they can use an 11 gigahertz radio, it just won't have the integrated antenna, and then they would have to order some of the other system pieces a la carte. Correct. Management, so okay. the, our extend MM software will work with a 5 gigahertz or with an 11 equally well. It will monitor the link, uh, it will do the, the switch over uh, equally well. So okay. it's, we want to be flexible at the end of the day. Sure. Sure. Um, next question uh, had to do with the power to the second radio. The question was, is it only 24 volt DC? I think you 
showed that on one of your diagrams, but maybe you could tell a little bit more about the power to the second radio. Yes, so um, you know, again, what we have provided or what we are going to provide uh, as a you know, very simple, all the way up to the tower, a dual-ended outdoor injector is clearly 48 volt. That's what our radio, the ether all radio need. Uh, we have looked at uh, you know, the two, the, the five gigahertz radios that we have recommended here, the, the B5 from Mimosa and the Air Fiber 5X HD from Ubiquiti, not all, not all of the Air Fiber models. And these clearly can function you know, with a wide range of uh, uh, you know, 24 volt and 48 volt DC. So our solution will work for the two radios that we have recommended. Um, it is possible that, you know, again, somebody will look at a, another radio and will find that it does not do the 48 volt DC and we won't be able to utilize our uh, dual-ended outdoor injector. Uh, but but uh, again, for what we have looked at and what we recommend, we know that our dual-ended injector will work well. Okay. Thank you. We have uh, a couple more questions. There's one long question that I'm going to break into two because I think it'll be a little more uh, digestible that way. The question is, why not just set up this 10 gig and 1 gig and have them both operating at the same time? I bond them in the switch and then you've got an 11 gigabit link uh, in good weather and that will fall back to 1 gigabit during heavy rain. Okay. Um, I think uh, a switch itself a, you know, even a, an intelligent switch uh, will not be able to do this because uh, you know it, you know you need you you want um, you want to avoid that you know, loop of traffic uh, so as soon as you connect you know two switches with two different links there is a potential for a loop and one need to find a way to avoid the loop so uh, lag as an example uh, would not work because lag on on any switch uh, will only work when the two links are working at the same speed and are working also on on the same uh, path if you want uh, so 10 gigabit and 1 gigabit I'm, I'm not aware of switches which are able to do lag in that case and would combine into 11 or 11 gigabit of capacity uh, other options are you not know, doing you know, any kind of uh, STP type of solution, um, which again would mean that only one of the two links is available at any one point in time. Uh, so that is an option. Uh, you know, it will technically it will work, and if uh, the organization wants to deal uh, with uh, you know any kind of STP, that is fine with us again. For those organizations that you know don't are not comfortable with uh, uh, you know, the the reaction time of STP, which can be sometimes you know many seconds uh, to react to a change in the topology, uh, you know, maybe I should have said it, but uh, the way we do the switchover, uh, as soon as we detect that the uh, threshold is below the capacity, we are going to switch as a carrier. No speeds, so 50 milliseconds or less, heatless uh, switchover. Uh, you know, again, we want to make it, uh, you know, first of all, uh, uh, a carrier grade uh, you know, cap capability. And also, we want to make it simple to deploy. So, if you have only one single cable available today, uh, all the way to the tower, and the organization doesn't want to spend the time or the money or the labor to add an additional cable. Uh, you no, know, you can just utilize the built-in capabilities of the Ether radio. On the other, on the other hand, if the organization has maybe you know more advanced uh, routing gear, you know between the two towers, and now they want to do something smarter, utilizing any kind of layer three routing software, uh, that is fine as well. I'm, I don't know how fast these uh, different layer three capabilities will switch over from. The millimeter wave link to the backup link, but again, if if speed is important, you know, if the reaction time is important, uh, we offer something which is going to do just that: switch within 50 milliseconds, heatless switching, very simple to deploy. It's all controlled within a single uh, GUI of the Ethereum radio. Uh, and as I said, we want to make it you know 
something which is available, accessible to any kind of skill set in the organization. If the organization organization has something very capable, you know, has a you know, a large staff available, somebody with uh, good experience, by all means, you know, we are not saying that's the only way to go. Okay. Yeah, there's um, this question line has actually gotten fairly involved here. I'm going to recommend, um, I'm going to recommend, I'll send a private note to this gentleman that we get, schedule a call on the side for him. He has some, some more deeper questions that I think we need to go into here. Um, just wanted to emphasize one more thing that you mentioned about the switchover, Shimon. There's a question, um, and I think you just answered it, but I want to make sure everybody heard the answer. How how is the switchover? Is there any packet loss, um, anything like that, when they when the traffic moves? So, no, we have a, you know, a very sophisticated switching engine uh, in all of our radios, 258010. And it's all heatless. So, you know, first of all, it, we make it work very fast so that the, the user experience or the critical services would not be interrupted. And we also make it uh, heatless, you know, in both the, the switching over and the switching back uh, so that it, uh, it would be, you know, very, I would say, I will not say you know, no disruption at all, but we really have uh, done you know, the best possible uh, or, or minimization of uh, impact on the traffic. Okay. All right. Um, I'm looking, I don't see any other questions. So I think with that, um, I think we're done. Would uh, any closing comments you'd like to make, Shimon? Uh, you know, I think uh, within uh, this very long lines of questions there was something about the vlans which uh, might not have been clear uh, against you know some organizations run vlans on their network some do not uh, some just run a management vlan for obvious reasons uh, you know we we are not saying that uh, one has to set up vlans uh, you know for the extend mm switch over to work well or to work at all, uh, but in case uh, the organization has already defined some VLANs you know, for a number of other reasons, such as the management VLAN, uh, you know, please remember to uh, map the VLAN to, uh, you know, also to the backup port, not just to uh, ETH0, which is the RF port on our switches. So obviously, uh, most everybody I think would uh, would know how to do that. But in case uh, it was not necessarily obvious, uh, if you define VLANs on our radios, you know maybe you do inbound or out of band management in many different ways. Uh, remember that uh, any VLAN that you want to protect has also to be defined on the backup port as well. That's all. And if you don't do any VLAN mapping in your network, uh, you know the radios will switch over all of the traffic and will discard randomly on the case of the 2500 will discard with priorities in the case of the 8010 if, if we can see some priorities if we can see you know that there are some villain tags with bits or if we can see some dscp codes uh, in the case of the 8010 we are going to look at uh, any of these to try and protect the, the critical traffic and discard the, the less critical in case there would be more than one gigabit of capacity at any one point in time. Okay. Well, that is all the questions. Um, thank you all for attending the webinar today. This will, the, We are recording, and it will be available on our website for future reference. Uh, we appreciate your time and attention today. If you do have any follow-up questions, please do not hesitate to reach out to your local channel or partner or sales guy, or you can reach out to Shimon and I directly. Um, but thank you again, and everybody have a good day. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.